relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. Yeah. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Oh, nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man score 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. What's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 400 times before, but this time I really mean it. We got a special show, special guest. Um, first and foremost, Harry, what's going on? What's popping? Oh, you know, you know how I'm doing, Dante. I'm out here making people's lives better. I'm thrilling people, killing people, doing all of it. Killing? Jesus, Scott. Who are I mean, you killing? Not, not literally. I'm oh, okay. Killing right, their cool. boredom. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah, all right, that's that's all right. not how the kids use it? I like, I don't I like know, man. the kids. I don't know. I don't know the kids. Anytime you got to ask, is that how the kids are doing it? Yeah, they're probably not. probably shouldn't be They're using. probably I not. Want, let me introduce my guest, dog. I love this dude to death. Uh, and I'm, I, and we got to became friends because I'm going to say his intro is going to be the same thing. I sent him an email. I said, I feel like we should be better friends. <laughs> And he hit me back. He was like, yeah, that sounds good. Um, give it up for one of the funniest dudes I know, Mike Kaplan, y'all. Give it up for Mike Kaplan. And Thank you so much. Thank you for it. having me. I, you know, years ago, I was on uh, the beach doing mushrooms with my friend Micah Sherman. And I know, I know Mike Sherman. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's so funny and yeah, great. Yeah. And one of the things I remember talking about with him then was like, you know why? You know, one of the reasons we're friends is uh, we both like friendship. We're friendship <laughs> people, you know? And so especially, and, you know, not to say that Ed, I'm sure there are people who might not identify as friendship people. And yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to be friends with them, too, if they want. But. But, uh, you know, when somebody specifically makes an outreach, as you did, like, you know, uh, certainly as comedians, but as humans, you know, yeah. if somebody yeah. like sees you, like knows you or gets to know you or, you know, under knows you a little bit. Like you see a comedian, you're like, I think I have an idea of yeah. who that person might be. I'd like yeah, to yeah. get to know them. And we as comedians, it's so such a. A, a blessing, let's say, to get to have the opportunity to yeah. like reach out and be like, "Hey, we're are we we're doing the same thing, right? We yeah, could." Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, I'm I, and especially because you know when you think if you look at a person and you you have ideas about what a person might be, if you a person who looks like you looks at a person who looks like me, or vice versa, yeah, there yeah. might be preconceived notions. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, but it's a it's a an honor, a pleasure, a thrill to. Uh, uh, to know you and to be on your show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. I I also feel that way about Rogan. Like sure. I've never met Rogan, but he's he always kind of as a guy who I was like, I would I, I, I would like that. I like that dude. I, I like I like that he is he I think I like the fact that he's always on this journey to kind of grow and learn. And I and, and that is such a rare thing that people are so satisfied or, or maybe dissatisfied with who they are, but just don't work at it on a, on a, on a database. That's a fair point. And uh, I've, I'm always trying to tell people uh, about these similarities between me and Rogan, you know, but right. not everyone sees it. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it is, of course, uh, I feel like I, you know, I continue to enjoy. Well, you, you also yeah. hunt and kill deer with your bare hands. That is correct. <laughs> That's the Mike Kaplan I, mean, I know. Yeah, neither of us buy deer at the store. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, 
life is i mean i i'm i can't say uh definitively universally across the board that like what life is or is not about but certainly learning growing and you know continuing to yeah you know, i don't know everything i'm yeah there are times when i i can do better and improve and whenever yeah. i look back and i'm like oh that's bit i have a bit that i do sometimes where i'm like you know when i started doing comedy almost 20 years ago now right. i you know i i rec- I was confident, you know, delusionally self-confident as you <laughs> might need to be to as begin. Are, and then you're 20 in and you go, wow, I stunk. I How mean, much e- did I stink? <laughs> even a year in. The thing is, I would look back a year in and be like, wow, that wasn't good. But thank God I'm good now. And then every year I could look back and be like, well, that wasn't good. Every year look back yeah. and be like, oh, man, every year I felt like I had improved until yeah. finally I'm like, well, I guess I could use some work. <laughs> right. And you go, I, I you know, I kind of still stink. You and that's I mean? the delusion <laughs> that keeps you going. That's that's how you survive. We all have a little bit of delusion. And it's I, it's rel- yeah, it's relative because, yeah. you know, like we're we are uh, hopefully I think I'll say I'll make a blanket statement for the three of us. Okay. And most comedians are better now than we were five, Absolutely. 10, 15, 20 yes. years ago. And Absolutely. we're hopefully not as good as we will be in five, 10, 15, 20 I hope, years. I would hope not. I we're not done. But, the, but there is what I do love about comedy is that there is a level of delusion that you have to have to go. Uh, these people, these strangers, they need, they need, <laughs> they need to, to see hear, what I have to, to say. I, they they want, need to hear what I yeah, got to say. <laughs> they want to hear what I have to say. No, they need to hear what I have to say. And not only that, we're going to charge them for it. That, that's a certain level of egotism that you have to have to go, hear you, hear you, everybody. Drop what you're doing and listen to what I got to say about the differences between cats and dogs. I'm, I'm always trying to remove the ego because I realize the ego, the ego itself is the is the thing that blocks you from like real growth. And I, I one time I, Laurie Kilmartin, like one of so the funny. funniest, one of the funniest comedians. In the, I'm not even going to say female comedians. One of the funniest. She's dope. She's and, better than most comedians. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And uh we, I was giving her a ride home in my car and she she goes, uh, she goes, you um, she goes, I mean, come on. We all know. What did she say? She, we all got it because we were talking about delusional comics and she was like, come on, we're all kind of delusional. Right. And I go, I go, whatever. Do you mean? like I was like, <laughs> no, not you at all, aware. Right? <laughs> she goes, no, I mean, come on. We all know we're not going to make it. But we still lie to ourselves saying that we're going to make it. And I go, no, I don't know. I was literally like, I have no idea what you're fucking talking about. But it's weird because even in life, you need to kind of fake it before you make it to keep going. Because if you sometimes if you sit there and look at the realization and the possibility of not making it, sometimes it's just too much. Like all of it, anything worth pursuing it in theory is just too much. And I mean, I don't know what Lori's, you know, mindset or intention was at the time, but perhaps it could have been this or this I'll add my own is like, you yeah. know, in life, like in this incarnation, like we're not going to make it last forever. Right, like, right. OK, like so far, so good. We all have potentially <laughs> at times the delusion that uh, that we're going to live forever. Like, yeah, I think yeah. we're going to make it uh, yeah. to infinity. And I mean, you know, <laughs> in some ways, the molecules and energy that are our bodies will do that. Talk but your shit, yeah. Mike. Talk <laughs> that shit. <laughs> uh, the the thing about uh, ego that I, I think Mike about this is sometimes. collaborating with uh, Black Thought. To do a new to do a new mix release. I am Mike's only friend that will say, talk that shit, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am happy to talk this shit. Uh, I'm happy for the invitation. Like when I started out, here's a, a couple things. I remember I feel like it was more your eye was like asking jokes more than telling jokes. You're like, yeah, 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 is yeah. this a joke? Is this a joke? And eventually, <laughs> even, you know, even now, you know, 20 years in, you're still, you don't know how to say something exactly the first time necessarily. It still takes right. work. Like you're a little further ahead. But uh, again, Mike, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. You're like a divinely enlightened Buddha type master, uh, omniscient and such, know everything, have, you know, you're just helping everyone else along the path trying to get there, like a bodhisattva, as yeah. they say. I you mean, know, Dante like, does does get people to rub his belly for luck he does <laughs> like take the energy mostly chicks but yeah dante much more dante's peak than inferno i would say you know and 
I here's the thing that when I when I started out, you know, like I feel like the focus for comedians is like on getting laughs. And that right. and that maybe that focus never goes away in some way, but at some point it shifts or at least there becomes a new component to it about giving laughs, like truly right. like right. having it not necessarily, it's not only about you. It's, uh, but in the, whereas it might be in the beginning, like as a child, like a child, like they don't ha initially don't have a sense of anyone else at all existing. Right. And right. because they don't, they can't feed themselves. They can't fend for themselves. They need to be given. And so comedi baby comedians need to be fed a diet of yeah. laughs, you know, right, in order right, right. to grow big and strong and then be like, right. oh, now, okay. like when people after a show sometimes say like, thank you for the laughs. I'm like, thank you for the laughs. It becomes right. like a symbiotic thing where, you know, ultimately, hopefully, we, you know, you're both at the audience and comedian uh, in combination are both. Uh, you're right, because you can't, you can't do other. it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. And it's just like, but I mean, you know, I a lot of times I'll be on stage and now I'm but I, I'm 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 confident enough to stop the show and say that, listen, I'm not doing this by myself, motherfuckers. It's <laughs> this is this is not me dancing around like a fucking monkey. And you guys go thumbs up, thumbs up. Brian Scott McFadden, he says, no, bring me another one. You know, bring me a black <laughs> one this time. I want a black one. <laughs> uh Last night I was performing and uh, a small audience, like, you know, like 15 people and like yeah. uh, one people stage right, like laughed a lot at one thing. Everybody else is fine. And I was like, y'all are really good. Like everyone else is nice. Like you're on your phone, you know, but like it's nice <laughs> yeah, to yeah, yeah, appreciate. To uh, of course, like the, I started out in Boston uh, at the comedy studio. I don't know okay. if you've been there. Rick no. Jenkins, uh, the owner and host of so many of the shows. Uh, when I started out, I remember uh, like two, two things. One, he would always tell the audience like at the end of every show, he's like, we couldn't do this without you. We'd look very silly. And right. he would always even from the get go, from me not being not having any good jokes, not knowing what I was doing, just right. starting out after every set, he would always say like, thank you for being here thank you right. for doing this like right. i couldn't do this without and i'm like i no i thank you like i <laughs> like there's a billion of me you know like there's like i like i a comedian need a place to perform right, you right. A, a place to perform need comedian. like it's it's all uh i was i had a, a woman on my podcast earlier today uh i think i'll release it tomorrow uh jesse wayburn she's really funny and thoughtful and she kept bringing up the the concept of the interconnectivity of you me and everything and like okay. that's it like there is no i was just reading that also in i think a teak not han book i don't know if you read teak not han i'm reading the no, miracle I will, I will check it out oh yeah the miracle of start? mindfulness is okay. what i'm reading i mean any he's got a couple that are really like thin reads that are like how to love how to walk how to fight mm -hmm. how to eat how to relax mm -hmm. uh how to meditate and they're all kind of about meditation and they're all he's you know a buddhist monk and he also is talking about, you know, if you look at a table, you know, you can like the table that but th there's things in the world that are non table. But some of those things are in the table, like the metal that becomes the screws, like the mm. trees or the water, the rain that fell so the trees could grow the sunlight so that the trees could live the right. the carpenter who made it the carpenter's parents, right. you know, so the interconnectivity of everything that creates it and everything that needs to to be there to create it, even if it's not just I, well, I guess in a sense, the sun is it, there's minerals in what you, you know what I'm saying. Exactly. But, yeah. The yeah. the energy goes into the plants that turns, yeah. you know, the, the chlorophyll converts it into the energy right. like there's the, the sun. We wouldn't be alive without the sun. The, right. we, the sun is right. in us. And also right. we are, you know, uh, billions of years, uh, you know, like the the inheritance, the descendants of like the stars <laughs> that the Big Bang created right, initially right, right. that, you know, we're all we're all stars. So right, Laurie right. Kilmartin's wrong. We made it. We're the stars <laughs> that not only are they just like us they are us well you know it's a, it, it because i often make that that connection in a different well first thing i, I went there was something i was thinking about before please like you your the pursuit of perfection right we pursue perfection even though it's unattainable and the reason why it's unattainable is because as you move closer to perfection 
it moves further away from you. It's the horizon. Yeah. Right. Right. It's right, like, right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I think I can make it to the horizon. Then right. you get to where the horizon <laughs> was and, and you're like, and no and more horizon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always use it. Like when you look at a sw- I remember I was making a sandwich and I'm looking at Swiss cheese. And, you know, when you hold it here, you see these holes, you go, oh, it's, it's six holes. And then you get closer to it and then there's more holes and then you get closer to it. This and then the whole thing is just fucking a, it's a fishnet. The basically. whole thing. The oh, whole yeah. Thing is, so so it's it's um, it's it's an interesting thing when you say that my my what's also is when you when you talk about the interconnected. First, first, I want to say this. So you still with your girl? Yes. I'm going to yes. bring this all together. Are yes. you still doing the open relationship thing? No, we've been no. monogamous for several years now, and uh, it is uh, it is wonderful and beautiful, and I'm very happy. And uh, it's a, it's the longest relationship I've been in now. Yeah. It's the new hour of comedy that I'm working on that she is like a contributor to, uh, in part because I mean she's a wonderfully funny person, and when you're dating a funny person. And they're right, not right. a comedian, then right. uh, that if they generously gift, you know, the yeah. the funny things they say. But she also watches the show when she travels with me, and she right. remembers how it was the night before, the week before, the month before, and so. like she's a, a you know a wonderful like professional, creative collaborator as well as a personal right. one. And so the hour is about our relationship and about my growth as a human, as a relationship partner. It's about relationships and marriage and engagement and all the the various stages that you know that i've been through and that i've seen and experienced and the show is actually called right now uh imperfect but the lowercase i am and then capital perfect so it also looks like a cross between imperfect and i'm perfect you know sort of yeah 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 yeah. this kind of juxtaposition oh yeah yeah. so what 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 how did you guys decide that you were going to close off the open relationship because how long did the open relationship go on uh, well, when we met, I was uh, in an open relationship with a different person, and mm. so that was what enabled I us. This. I remember yeah. this extensively. Yeah, it enabled us to, you know, date and get to know each other, and we became like we became just very close. Uh, immediately like you know, uh, in sort of romantic and like mm. just intellectual, emotional, you know, in all the ways that you'd want, and then, uh. Six months in, uh, we were into, you know, sort of not seeing each other exclusively. She did see someone exclusively, uh, and so we did not see each other for a few months. Uh-huh. But uh, that, yeah, that always that, ruins the, that part of the open relationship. You're like, yeah. ah, Dretz. But like, that, you're, you're happy yeah. for them, but you're like, ah, Dretz. Oh, yeah. But uh, that that relationship turned out uh, not to be the best. Uh, and so he was a bitch. He wasn't Mike Kaplan. <laughs> Fuck that's that right. dude. It's true. He was not Mike Kaplan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, and that is that is who Mike is all about the truth. <laughs> if anything, Mike is a, he'll tell you where the truth is. I, I, I cut out all the other stuff. That's what I love about Mike. He's like, look, this I don't is, know. Yeah, that part I don't is know true. everything, but <laughs> I will. If you point at somebody, I can definitely tell you if someone is or is not Mike Kaplan. Yep, that's, uh, that's and that, that that's guy true. wasn't. And he wasn't Mike Kaplan. <laughs> y'all, y'all are closer, but. Uh, <laughs> And everybody real Mike Kaplan, yeah. please stand up. <laughs> please stand up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Be, you know, what is it? Oh, proud to be out of contr- out of my mind and out of control. Yeah. yeah one yeah. more time. Loud as I can. How does it go? OK. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, we we were still, you know, we we got back together and right. she and we we moved in and uh, our relationship just evolved in a in an in sort of a natural organic way and so i actually i don't even think of it as like closing the openness so much as opening the closeness that we have uh where like there's let me put it to you like motherfucking mike kaplan broke that bitch (laughs) (laughs) i think i think we both we she and i both broke uh, each other yeah opened opened each other if up by if uh, by that bitch you mean this relationship yeah my yeah. and by oh, broke yeah, I mean, you mean, I mean yeah, yeah, that's closer what I together that's what i meant that's what i meant then indeed yes i i think i mean it's just uh in this life you know there's only a limited amount of time and i i believe that i like in the past was like 
a a com- a completionist, you know, a completist, like mm-hmm. wanting to like if I'm watching a TV show, I'm gonna watch the whole thing, like you know, all right, the right. seasons, Every all episode, the spin-offs, even, the bonus, even a shitty. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm like you, like it'll be a shitty movie. I've never walked out of a movie. Oh yeah, and now I I offer it to you. Here's, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a weird example, but I I watched the. When I was watching The Wire, uh-huh. I, I was also watching Desperate Housewives, in part because it was just so popular at the time. Just and I was like, I want to know. I want to see what the fuck this yeah, is. Yeah. What, are the, what are the people enjoying? Yeah. And yeah. I got into it. I really enjoyed it. it I thought it was like well written. And uh-huh. it was like a fun thing for, like it knew what it was and it was doing it well. Uh-huh. And it, it, I, I say that I was watching The Wire at the time because the, it was like the, my first time through The Wire. Which and is I, like the same thing as Desperate Housewives. Same, they're same very movie. similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I was like, they really compl- they really did to me complement each other well because I was wa- I had to like, watching The Wire was like reading literature. Yeah, you had yeah, to like yeah. pay close attention and like yeah, yeah. Uh, learn yeah. a whole new language and learn a new <laughs> way to, like I didn't understand. I, I, you had to really, you know, Pay attention, and with uh, I mean, Housewives, I, I, yeah. was, I didn't really do that because I was fluid ghetto already. Yeah, I was, yes, yes. I was, I, I was already fluid ghetto myself. If for <laughs> me, I had to, I had to like, I would take notes and be like, okay, they, these are the West Side folks, and these are the East <laughs> yeah, Side yeah, folks, yeah, and like, yeah. wait, who? And like, I've watched it many times since, and uh-huh. uh, I definitely like, I'm like, oh, I was. Uh, you know, young and foolish and naive, and like I'm glad that I'm I'm a person who now understands it uh, from the yeah. get go. But at the time, it was much and more then, helpful. And then you're also distracted. You go, oh shit, Donnell's a crackhead. Like <laughs> Donnell Rollins is a crackhead. How do oh you yeah, yeah, absolutely. But so. Desperate Housewives was uh, so nice to me because it was just like, here's what's happening. There's no mystery about it. Like, you don't have to you don't really even have to think. Just like, let it sit back let it, and let it happen. We got it. And so I watched that show for I think it was on for seven or eight seasons. Yeah. And I watched it for so many of them until I got to a point in maybe the final season where I was like, I'm actually not really enjoying it anymore. Okay. I'm not Fair getting enough. something out of it. And the I think the older me the or the younger me the previous me would have been like but I started it I gotta finish it I wanna right, right. I wanna do it but I feel like my life is more complete for having my viewing of de- this TV show to be less complete so like for every yeah. TV show you keep watching for every movie you keep watching there th- that you don't enjoy as much there's so many fair others enough. waiting in the fair life enough. queue fair you know enough. yeah I, yeah fair enough I I think I've, I've, I've I uh I I guess I've never walked out of a movie not because uh because well, is it, I'm can such I ask a, you this, Dante? Is it? Yeah. Are you very like me? I, if I go into a movie, I want to see the movie. It's very rare that I'm kind of like Even I'm just rolling the sucks, dice on something. I want to experience the suckedness of it. Sure. But to be, to, but to be honest, I'm also not talking about a series. I'm not talking about yeah. huge chunks oh, yeah. of time. You're so talking about two hours, not 50 hours. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. So it's like I like a lot of times people was as, as a comic. And when you're creating like uh, people like, oh, you, you, you watch football or you watch, you know, Super Bowl, Salad Bowl. Right. You, you go, you go. It's sort of a thing where people ask me now. I will watch boxing. I will watch MMA. Um, not just because of the violence, which, I, yeah, I dig that, too. But the point is, it's a small commitment that you make for that fight and then it's done. So so you're not watching a guy who has a fucking two hundred million dollar contract while you're trying to pay your bills and do it. You know what I'm saying? It's a small. And so I, I don't watch football and basketball because I don't want the I don't want the emotional connection that it takes when now it eats up so much of my productive time. So I guess I don't walk out of a I don't walk out of a movie because it's only it's a small. Section. Yeah. And to experience it in its entirety, even when it sucks, I I, I think you get something out of the suckedness 
of oh, Ghost yeah. Dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I think that you definitely, I, a hundred percent. I mean, everybody gets to make their own decisions. Number right. one, and I do. Th- I also have very rarely. I've like turned off a movie that I'm watching at home more than I've walked out of a movie right. uh, in the theater. But you know, you give it a chance, like, uh, and and that makes a lot of sense. But. And and I guess to also I want to add that this is my own my own journey to realize like I was watching probably lots of garbage you know right, right, at, right, right. at a time that I that I thought and now like I I eat you know I eat garbage and take in metaphorical like creative like TV yeah, yeah, yeah. garbage on like a limited basis you know like once in a while like right. you know if you're on a plane if you're you know just want to mindlessly uh, clock out but. For to bring it back to the reason I brought up the analogy is mm. my relationship is like one. It's a series that I'm committed to. Like, okay, right, well, it's well, my, uh, yeah. I, I talk about this in in my comedy. I don't just I won't just do the bits, but I right. truly like previously was like you know is there what if there's somebody better out there you know for right, any right, relationship right. that I was in like what if, like I want to want to sample everything and now like even just this week I'm doing a voice acting gig and they they get us lunch from like you know i'm uh i'm vegan and there's a vegan place they're getting lunch from and for this week they were like what which meals do you want and the first day i got a caesar salad and i ordered a different one each day but on the third day i was like you know i like the caesar salad better than all these so i'm like i'm just 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 get me that caesar salad i'm committing to that because every day i get that joy and and it's the same every day and yeah. people when people wonder or worry about like monogamy as i used to to be like oh the, i feel like the two concerns are like what if what if it's boring well then that's not the relationship like my relationship is never and will never be boring because in part because like you're a component like the interconnectedness we were talking about yeah. uh to this now is like you know the the i didn't make this up the idea that if you are bored you are boring because if yeah if of yeah. time, like I was just thinking that you you are part of the re- the relationship is you. This is just that the, the sun is the table. Exactly. And so what are you doing that's not involved? Um, we had Vinnie Brandt on 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 the podcast, and Vinnie Brandt said this is his second wife, and and one of the things that he says is that he dates his wife every day. Mm. Like he gets up and he dates her. Every his intention is to, and I and I I preached that for years. Shave your balls, take a shower, mm. look the best that you can. Don't get to this point where you get comfortable. See, this is why we can't get the same book deal that Steve Harvey gets. Is because you, you start out with the shave your balls. That's fellas, you got to shave your balls well, instead of instead of, hey, listen. fellas, you need Jesus in your life. It yeah. might sell better. <laughs> Vinnie Brand could get that deal. Vinnie Brand that, might uh, get the deal. Date your wife. That's a your very wife is better yeah, yeah. than shave your balls. But the same from the same tree. Yes. So Paul yeah. McCartney used to call Linda McCartney his girlfriend, even though they had been married for almost right, 30 right, years. Right, right. Very sweet. Because yeah, I, I think it's in invo- yeah. you involved. It's I, like I it's funny because, like, you know, even now that I have my son, you know, everybody's like, oh, you're going to have another one. You're going to have a girl. And I go me being 50 plus years old, I, I realize my responsibility is to grow a good human. And and should I really split the difference between a daughter that could end up being a cunt that because I didn't because I didn't put as much into her that I should have put into it. Why don't I focus on this and make this little guy the best dude that I can make it as, as a because no, you know, this it, it's always sucks to have a lot of mediocre food. You know what mm. I mean? It's like you're better off with the Caesar salad you like as opposed to all the other salads that you just try and he said just and, and and i find if you work on that if you're really and your intention i think you also i think in as you get older you realize that things are not out of your control so much more of life is in your control if you put the effort in if you're willing to make the sacrifice there certainly are things that are more in our control than other things and i mean i would put that to you like number one like have the number of kids that you want and it sounds yeah. like you've got a great attitude about uh caring for this human that you've got you've got potentially you know limited resources and yeah. uh and you want to focus and i think that also it's possible that uh 
if you if you were caring for a daughter, if you were raising a daughter to be, you know, a strong individual, uh, right, in, right, right. you know, to learn who she was, that you know, the way that she turns out, you know, the children are what what you feed them as far as you know, the food, the metaphorical food, and it's and, also it's yeah. also your personal representation because. You whether you realize it or not, I and mean, then this is something I don't know if you, are you ever going to have kids or you don't know. The plan is uh, that we will not. You that will is not. The, yeah, that okay. is the the current plan, uh, and um, it's so far so far both of us are on board with the uh, okay. not having kids plan. Uh, you know, plans are always potential. You know, one never yeah. knows the future, but that's the plan. Yeah. Um. But the 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 representation, the representation that you are, who you are. But, you know, if you have kids, your son, you it doesn't matter what you're telling them. It's who you are. Oh, yes. The, they, the representation they, of the model you give them is they really, listen to what you do for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And and the, the and the woman that his mother is, is the chick who's going to he's going to marry. He's going to marry his mom. And and if and if it's you know you I, I like I've, I've been we've been doing this podcast and I've been doing consultations for about four, five years six years now and over and over again you know these guys will take to get into these patterns these cyclical patterns and the women you know abandoned fathers and they're fight you know they're getting a guy who's emotionally unavailable and they go yeah what's that remind you of you know what i mean hmm. and no matter how they are and then when they get somebody who is available they don't want him because he's 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 uh he's not valuable because it, it because the, the toxic they're so accustomed to the toxicity that they the toxic the toxic relationship feels normal it feels better oh because yeah it's more familiar yes you know? if if you had i mean we all have our the things that were gifted or you know that we were cursed with in yeah. childhood but yeah if a child uh i understand if a child receives love or not or if you know whatever the parents do uh is normalized for yeah. the child and yeah. then yeah they will they will seek they those mimic things it. they absolutely mimic it over and, and over again yeah and thank goodness uh growth is possible you know like yeah. we we are hopefully you know yeah. we know the things that our parents did and we like you know you know what your parents did that either helped you become who you are and or uh you know were obstacles mm -hmm. at a time were challenges uh mm -hmm. that you know kept you from being as happy or fulfilled as you might want to be that so you can hopefully uh repeat the good ones and uh and flip flip the other ones and then your child will will Mike, i don't know what you're talking treatment. about me and my oh. dad are just fine me and oh. my dad have a great relationship <laughs> it's not for everyone yeah uh, oh he's I being sarcastic and i understand out of his it's, mind. it's funny <laughs> i watched him I also... have a panic attack basically <laughs> while while an email attachment wouldn't open up and i'm like this uh. is too much dad what are you doing <laughs> oh man but you gotta well, i'm learning i learned no, and I love my dad, and he's overall a good-hearted man, but he See doesn't handle disclaimer? stress yeah, well. Throw that disclaimer yeah. in. <laughs> I just but a, lot you know. of, a lot of parents have uh, attachment issues, yeah. you know. My mama is not a good person. That's the, I'll give you that one. That's free. There's no okay. disclaimer there. That's His just mom, the end of that statement. I don't know statement. if you know this term. I mean, you have been watching The Wire. She is wild for the night. I don't know if you know that yeah. terminology. But <laughs> I don't know if I do, but I have a I have a vibe. Yeah, I get a you, sense. Yeah, you yeah. Get the con in context. Yeah. But she's a night owl, like just enjoying <laughs> yeah. her time out at a restaurant or two until, you know. Yeah, a restaurant. Midnight. That's it, yeah. Mike, a restaurant. <laughs> um, but I learn from the things that I love my dad. So I, I take the things that are good about him, caring about other people, yeah. uh, putting, you know, making sure people are taken care of and, you know, sacrificing. And then I take away the bad things like you know, being too pan panicky, not making good decisions or, or, you know, being too stressed out about small things for you, Mike, what's the thing that you learned from your parents that you picked up maybe good or bad from your parents or family? Sure. Well, I guess I'll, I'll share it like this. There's a, uh, I, my girlfriend, I would say, is my family now, and mm -hmm. I will also bring in my other family of, mm -hmm. of origin as well, who I have, I am on very good terms with. I love uh, my my grandmother. My mom's mom died a year ago or a year and a half yeah. ago, right at the beginning of the pandemic. She was yeah, ninety one. Oh, yeah. I thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, she lived uh, a good number of years, and we had a lot of uh, wonderful times. And my mom used to talk to her every day. 
And now I started at least, if not uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I started talking to my mom every day because now there was like, she was living alone. And so like sort of the double whammy of like the universal uh, grief and also the personal. And so now we don't necessarily talk extensively every day, but we at least check in, we text, we call, we talk most days, sometimes for hours. And uh, this is now to say, so that that's one thing, I mean, that I've learned in recent years, like, mm-hmm. you know, you're a kid, you're like, you have the, whatever feelings you do about your parents, maybe, maybe you love them, maybe it's challenging, but eventually there's like a separation, a pulling away, you know, in teenage years and you become your own individual and an yeah. adult, you're like, I, and then there's like all these different layers and levels of like, oh, like now it's, I don't have to think my parents are uncool like I used to when I was a kid or a teenager, like now, oh, they're, they're human beings and I can, if, if they're they're kind people, if they're mm-hmm. doing their best, if they're you know open heart, it, what, like you know your dad Harry, like if yeah. they're like your dad or at least in that in that direction, you can be like yeah, I'll engage, and you get to decide. Like it's all about again, like what what people are in your life, what people do you want in your life, what kind of people, what kind of role models, because we are the we become the people that we spend the most time with. We take on the characteristics. And so it's nice to have people in our lives who are uh, hopefully even kinder or smarter or mm-hmm. capable. Like, you know, if, if you're a young comedian, you want to hang out with, you know, if you can, like get be in the company of older, more experienced comedians who yeah. like be like, oh, what what can I do to become like that? What can I do to become like that in life? But so one way it's funny now I'm talking extensively and it's it's kind of funny the thing that I'm going to talk about having learned recently uh-huh. and that I continue to learn is about listening that uh, my girlfriend uh, has got she has read a number of books about listening she is an amazing listener we're coming at this from like sort of different perspectives in our life like she has always like been and it's perhaps you know it's not necessarily uh, a gender dynamic that exists for everyone but you know men are socialized to you know be more potentially aggressive to speak Uh, more to be present to take take up up space space. yeah Yeah. and uh women are socialized in the other direction and so don't shrink don't take up space don't yeah yeah. we're both meeting you know we're coming to meet in the middle she is expressing herself more i am listening more there's a specific book that she read and recommended to me and i read and it's so good like and it's so simple to read and it's just called you're not listening the book is called you're not listening and it's about how even if you think you're a good listener like look you're a podcaster you have guests on you ask questions you listen and also you you know I on my podcast, you know, sometimes a person says something. I'm like, ooh, that reminds me of something. I want to say a thing. And that's that's the way conversation happens sometimes. Yeah. But also we can learn so much more when we talk less and listen more. And so just a funny quick thing about like when I talk to my mom on the phone very frequently, like she has relationships where she listens more extensively with me i listen more extensively in part because she is like listening to everyone else and then she's like i need a time to uh to share and i'm happy to listen because i also have so many outlets for expressing myself for talking with my girlfriend with a best friend i talk to most days right. with audiences etc so yeah Rini, my girlfriend, she's like, I want everyone to read this book because it's about even if you think even if you are a good, we're almost all not as good a listener as we think we are or as we could be. And it just lays it all out so extensively. So I was and she's like, I want to recommend this to all of my family. But it seems like it would be rude to be like, hey, you should really benefit from you're not listening. But right. so I shared it with my mom on the phone. I was like, I'm reading this book and I'm getting a lot out of it. I'm, I'm reading you're not listening and I'm learning so much about how to be a better listener. And my mom's like, that sounds really great. What was it called again? And I was like, oh, it's called you're not listening. And she's like, great, I got it. Later, <laughs> she texts me. She's like, I just downloaded a free sample of how to listen. Was that it? And I was like, no, it's you're not listening. And it was it's just so the book is called called you're not listening and i it really is just it's it's ear opening mind opening eye opening you know it's all the heart opening like and it's just it's one of the ways that if you are bored or if you're in a situation a relationship a friendship a work any situation like it's not for everything like sometimes there are people who are you know doing harm and it's good Mm. to get away from them but if it's like a situation of boredom like asking a question and listening to a stranger to a partner there are things that like when i talk about like either on a podcast or that my mom listens to she's like oh i never knew that like we we don't even sometimes for the people we're closest to uh our partners our family like we don't necessarily 
listen. We don't necessarily invite yeah, them sure. to open up as much as we could. And we, and that's, it's just infinite doors are possible to open if we just, you know, shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up, up once in a while. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, what's interesting is that, you know, I, I started, you know, I started doing the consultation business just to take the things that I've learned and the lessons and, and kind of pass them on. And one of the things is when you're when you're doing that and you're you're paid for your time, it, you're paid to listen. But what I also find is because you do it, I do it so frequently as a as a, a hustle, as a job. And and I, you want to be a credible person like you you're you're creating this service and you genuinely want to be credible you want to help your intention is to help and so you listen you you start i've learned to listen so much more intentively intently because of the fact that people are paying me to do that and and i really want to find out what the what the rub is and what i find is there's a even the word in ter, words in terms of the tense give such an opening of what is really going on. So, um, for instance, Harry was talking about his father and he goes, you know, and I love my dad. The disclaimer mm -hmm. says so much about sure. that. Sure. It's it's it's. it's he gets on my fucking nerves, mm -hmm. but I don't want people to think I don't want people to think I don't love my dad. And and nobody was thinking that. But the but the the real thing underneath that is I don't, I don't mean to diagnose you, Harry, but but no, the, that's fair. But the 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 real thing is at sometimes you don't like him. Well, sure. Yeah. 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 There's, there's plenty of times like I don't him, like him. Yeah. The, 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 but the disclaimer is almost yeah. like you're you want to tell yourself but, but but i do love him but i do love him yeah. and and, yeah. and and that that so like when i do the consultations i've become such an in, a, a intense listener it's it's the rub is a little it's a tense it's a word it's you know i've said this a lot of times that you know what guys are guys would you know talk you know be in a sort of relationship or a pseudo relationship or beginning points of relationship and then they're not getting the response back that they want and they'll say they'll always start out by saying, hey, listen, you know, which is the mature way. Listen, uh, for not not for nothing. But if you you're not interested, interested in this, I don't want to waste your time. And I, I and I don't I don't and I don't want to waste my time. But the reality is you're already you don't know this person. You don't really give a fuck about their time. The reality is you're just you're trying to seem sensitive by saying, I don't want to waste your time. And you don't because you don't think you're wasting their time. What what's really going in is you think they're wasting your time, and the 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 inability to say that is a subtext that communicates something very different. So it's almost like you're not really communicating in a real way. Whereas I would say, listen, I'm not wasting my time. I want you to understand that my happiness is important. That I understand what my value is. I understand that. I want you to understand. I don't give a fuck about your time. I'm trying to get to know you so that we are closer so that your time does matter. But at this point, I don't give a fuck. We we're on an even plane and I'm I'm not giving you a disclaimer to let you know so that you can feel good about you being an asshole. I want you to understand that this I'm not comfortable with this. And if and and that I'm not wasting my time because my time is valuable. And what even the subtext of that says to the other person, oh, wow, this person values themselves and then I don't really have the upper hand, which it may or may not matter. But th just that little distinction makes it different in her head where she goes, oh, wait, oh, he's not. He's very decisive, which is also attractive. It's honest. It says the subtext is that I'm honest. I, 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 he values himself. He knows what his value is. And if you're not down with this, we can end this because I'm not wasting my time on you. If you're not worth it, you, I'm trying to be worth it for you. And I'm, I'm, I'm displaying that. And I expect the same. And if I'm not getting that, I'll sayonara. I'll see you because 
it's you're not that important. Now you can become I mean, you know, you're talking about you're happy in a relationship, you devalue. Whereas now you would go, babe, I don't, I don't want to waste your time. I mean, not that it would be that. And I don't, don't want to waste my time if this is not something you want to do. But you really do care. The honesty of that is there because they've earned that. And I think a lot of times guys will will they'll they'll disclaimer because they don't want you to think mm. that I want you to know. I don't, I don't know you. I don't even fuck about you yet. Yeah, I I hear what you're saying. I think one way that I conceive of my relationship is like, you know, that we're like teammates, you know, right. and, you know, you're you're a team together. You're you're uh, eventually, hopefully, uh, you know, a family right. unit, if that's what you want. And uh and your your partners in this thing that you know they talk about sometimes improv as like you're making an improv scene is like building the plane while you're flying the plane while you're building the plane right and right. that's what like to get from not relationship to relationship it's like the same kind of thing you're you're building the ship the relationship right. Right. like and part of the work of doing that in the beginning is both of you trying to determine whether this is the right shipmate whether right. this is the right teammate right. like and the way that you, you do that is to become the best version of yourself right. and hopefully Absolutely. they're becoming the best version of themselves and you get to you both get to know each other and share yourselves with each other in a way that you're like oh like do i value myself do they value themselves in a way that are you know that match that are compatible that are you know like are we are we attracted to each other in you know mind body spirit emotion you know all the ways that we want to and like certainly uh the idea of being like honest with yourself about what you feel and then you know honest with the things that are important like yeah if somebody either stands you up or doesn't yeah, yeah. you know doesn't call you doesn't value like in a way that yeah. like you get to determine i mean at the beginning of my relationship with my girlfriend like before we were you know uh a couple before we were uh exclusive certainly when we were just you know getting to know each other and going on you know maybe like a date a week uh mm -hmm. or uh sometimes less sometimes more mm -hmm. and but she told me like she had a job that she was on her feet all day uh like and she couldn't use her phone and just in general like then at night would have her time to herself and she let me know in advance she's like i am not like the most responsive texter like throughout the day it might be sometimes days you know but and so that was the kind of thing that there's no like one objective reality to like right. if they don't call you or write you or you know but I valued that open communication like from the get go yeah, to yeah, yeah. let me know like, yeah, this is what my life is like right now. If you want something different, then we're not compatible. And if Which you is fine and that's if, not your fault, it's not yeah. my fault. It just is. And if you're open to this and I was like in the beginning, I was like, oh, yeah, you're great. And I will I want to spend whatever time we can together. And if it's one day a week and a few texts here and there, then that's great. And then eventually, if it's more then great and eventually it was. So it's the idea of having like no you like you don't you don't know you, you're right. You don't know the other person right. and they don't know you. Right. So there there's no way like the idea of like it doesn't make sense to be entitled because like you know be like right. hey you're supposed to do this but like right. nobody's supposed to do anything right. in the beginning until until you do agree together like sort of to contractually like every step of the way like Vinnie Brand said like you know yeah. every day you are you know engaging in yeah. whatever step of the relationship that you're at whether it's the getting to know whether it's the you know continuing uh, right. whether it's the maintaining and or the or the ending of it yes or exactly this is not really working um, yeah. And that and I think that but I think a lot of times, you know, the, the terminology I use all the time is called shoplifting the pussy. <laughs> it's like you're 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 lying so that you can keep fucking her. And so you're 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 uh, you're you're basically trying you're, you're not you don't want to expose the true essence of what's going on so that you can still get the good parts that you want. And you would say, I, I think you would recommend against that. You would want to. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I don't think you should do that. I, I Because yeah. the, ultimately it falls apart. Ultimately, the truth comes out anyway. And then the person feels as though you've 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 taken something when you knew in the first place this was not your intention. Whereas right. which is interesting because half nine times out of ten, if you say this is not I don't want to I don't really like it like this. I don't, I don't really want to see you three times a week. 
then you give them an option. And nine times out of 10, and, and I think it's really because people really haven't done the work to really understand what their value is in the first place. Nine times out of 10, the person that actually has the balls to say that, the other person will never leave because it's almost like you're, it, it's almost like you're, it's like, you know how in, in pickup they talk about negging, but it's not, I don't, I don't have, I, the truth of it is the fact that the, that you're saying, I'm my time is worth more than yours. You're pausing yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And and it doesn't even have to necessarily your your time is valuable to you. you right. like, out, like our be. time. Yeah. And of course, that makes sense. And like, I mean, even like in friendships, you know, sometimes you have a friend who shows up late most of the time and you can either depending on how the friendship is if it's a good friendship like yeah. you can just like oh that's just they're always going to do that i'll bring a book you know mm -hmm. and it'll be worth it or right. if you're like well i don't want to i don't want to hang out with a person who doesn't show up like when they say they're going to show up and right. that's like you get to make your you decision start adjusting how you make the plans you go hey i'm going to yeah. be there too if you're there great if not i'm leaving without you and you right. leave yeah. and that yeah. you don't have to be angry and bitter you can go listen that's what it is yeah, and I mean, not waste your people, time. Yeah, because people know that, and then they are in this situation, and then they, because of their own personal insecurity, all of a sudden now there's something went wrong with you, because you don't like me enough. Like I want to make you like. I remember, I, I remember this girl I was dating. I, I met her, and she was cool, and we 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 dated for about ten months. Um, I think we went to. I I used to do a joke about it because we had a. Uh, it was 10 months. We went to all first run movies, mm -hmm. like around the, all the Marvel stuff. We saw all the all the best movies was dinner. Um, I'm a pretty good lay. I know the word on the streets is about that. Mike, I know mm -hmm. you've heard um, uh, multiple. You know, we had great sex. We would go out, but we went out seven times in 10 months. Huh? Right. And then she found out that I was dating somebody else, all which was understood. We never had a conversation other than that, and she goes, who is this bitch? Blah, 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 blah. She stalked the girl. Um, she was on my yeah. Facebook page and stalked the girl and then wrote a whole letter about how I'm a piece of shit. And and then when and I said I when we had the conversation, I go, listen, I like you. I said, but to me, 10 months and seven movies, movie dates is not a relationship in 10 months. I go, I get that you might you you like me in a way I'm just not on that same page. And I was even like, maybe I, may, I, I like you enough that maybe I could get on that page. But as of now, I'm not. And I don't really think I owe you anything with seven months, seven dinner. And my, but the joke was that a guy, a single guy would set, uh, would, would settle. Like if, if he pitched that, if a girl said it, listen, um, I'm gonna take you out on uh, seven dates, seven movie movies, seven fucks. I'm gonna go with 14 orgasms. Are you in or not? Well, wait, wait, why are you telling me this? Well, because after the 10 months, it's over. A guy would go, yeah, I could go for that, right? And then even at the end, they might go, they might go, uh, uh, you know, man, I really don't want this to end. You go, but you know, I made a deal. 10 months in. Seven movies. I saw all the Marvel origin stories. Dinner. I'm in. So it is what it is. Mike, it's such uh, a pleasure to talk to you, brother. It, it is to you as well. Thank you for respecting that. I know I, I said I had a hard out time. Can I say one last thing? Absolutely, uh, man. Go for the, it. With respect to the, the shoplifting concept, like the, the thing you're referring that, to shoplifting the pussy? Is that what uh, you're referring yeah, to? Like? That's the one. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> yeah, not yet. Oh, just in general, I'd like to discuss uh, stealing from a store. Sure. Um, <laughs> the the thing that we want to do and this is a thing like that i also like learned in my life that rather than like not tell someone the whole truth because you're afraid of what they might think about what the truth is right. like rather than you know lie or omit or like hope that they won't find things out why right. not have the truth of your life be something that you value and find like pride in and meaning and so when you you know have the truth be something that you want to tell yeah. and that when you tell it it can then be hopefully you know some kind of maybe a filtration system that if you tell people the truth about yourself that uh, about what you are doing and working on and caring about and looking for yeah. and then if people like 
the final thing is uh, when, when I was I was married when I was uh, 25 and uh, at that time and it was monogamous at the time that this story happens and uh, I, I was at a show like setting up just starting out doing comedy just setting up the room and like three young women were there like around my age and I was just like joking with them and laughing but only one of the three was really laughing at everything that i said and i wasn't yeah. like hitting on them i wasn't flirting right, right, right. like because i was actively not and I, that was like when i was being my truest oh. self like right. not trying to make something happen not right. like being like how, not coming it. from yeah not yeah. coming from a place of lack or fear or trying to make something happen because we can't yeah. make things happen we can only be our best selves and then the you know like a river just a river does its thing you know a yeah, tree yeah. does its thing yeah uh, nature does its thing and i was like oh the person who responds to me the most like that's you I want to be myself the most the easiest the most peaceful the most natural and then whoever responds to that as, in a relationship in a friendship in an audience in you know in a podcast you know whatever yeah. it is like that's what it's it doesn't have to be like relationships are work in a way but they don't have to be hard work in in that way of like yeah. being like, how do I make this person? How do I what's trick the, this what's person? What's the technique? What's the yeah. technique? Yeah, what's the technique the, is how, yeah. Honesty. I get that all the time. Yeah. I get yeah. yeah. I go be. I always. This is what we. Me and Harry preach. It's a real game. Is no game at all. Mm. It's it's yeah. just being authentic, being yes. your authentic self. And when you're being your authentic self, it is the most attractive thing, you know. It also will scare away people who are inauthentic in their lives. Can't handle because you're, it. You're, Perfect. My, my truth sharpens your honesty or it makes you get the fuck out. Oh, I, yeah. I like you. attracts like. So yeah. hopefully like yeah. yourself, become a version of yourself that you like more and more. And then that will that will attract not everyone. You're not going to get everyone, but it'll but attract nobody does. The nobody people, does. the right people will be attracted yeah. to you. As even, you if, even if you're lying, you don't get everybody. Oh, you, you yeah. Can, you're so plug your stuff what's going on instagram thank the, you the, yeah to show the podcast everything appreciated so mike kaplan is spelled m-y-q-k-a-p-l-a-n that is all my social media that's my website you can find my latest album of stand-up is called aka and i've got a bunch of others and my podcast is uh broccoli and ice cream and i have another one called the faucet and i have a new newsletter that i send out once a week for free and more if you subscribe with some jokes and uh where i'll be and it's uh, at mike kaplan.substack.com but yeah if you search for mike kaplan wherever you want to find things you'll find mike kaplan uh thank you for finding me reaching me having me uh it's always such a oh, pleasure mike, it's always good to talk to you harry talk to me uh, just go to all my stuff at Harry Turjanian. Uh, sign up uh, on my YouTube page. That's where I'm doing all my stand-up clips and stuff. That check that out. But most importantly, go to over to Patreon.com/slash/Manschool202. That's where we're doing the bonus content. And we're about to go over there and do some bonus content now, including uh, uh, a conversation. Uh, I'm going to talk about my first radio gig and uh, two of my mentors, and one of whom just passed away. I want to talk a little bit about that. So you could join us over at Patreon to uh, get that conversation and uh, more chicks in relationships. Chicks? When did I start using that? Mm -hmm. More uh, more, more dating in relationship jive. advice. <laughs> yeah, listen. Don't be a jive turkey. All right? Keep on trucking with the uh, Man School 202. That's right. Uh, everything me, Dante Nero, the Dante Nero. Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> and you'll, you'll get all my stuff. Sign up for the Patreon. Support us, please, so we can keep doing this. Uh, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what will Dante do? Sexual Revolution being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Thanks, Mike. You're the best, bro. It's good to Thank see you. Thank you. All right, bro. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero. Hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson. Produced by Harry Turjanian. Executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.